If you are about to start your luxury handbag collection, then this video is for you. Why should you listen to me? I've been buying luxury designer bags and accessories for almost 20 years. Keep watching for my top tips and things to consider when starting your collection. Quick disclaimer, if there is a bag on your wish list that you absolutely want, can't, not have, you're already saving up for, just ignore me. If you really want something, you're just gonna get it. You aren't gonna let my opinion sway you. But if you are looking for a bit of advice, I don't have the biggest collection, but I do use all the bags that I buy and I am always looking to add to my collection. So I think these tips are very universal and transferable to any stage of your journey when buying luxury or expensive designer handbags and accessories. These are just my thoughts. I'm just a random person on the internet, so just take it or leave it. I started collecting in 2006 and my first designer handbag was the classic Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 in monogram canvas up here. The categories that I am gonna talk you through today are the dollars, cost, cost per wear, residual value, resale value, versatility, practicality, durability, your wardrobe and head or heart. <laughs> Let's talk money. You need to look at how much you can afford to spend, look at the cost of the handbag. Don't go into debt for anything as fleeting as a luxury handbag. You need to get your money's worth out of your first bag. Otherwise you will feel like it was a waste of money and you will feel, I guess, discouraged from continuing on if it's something that you want to do. I always use my handbags that I buy. I don't just leave them on the shelf to just collect dust and look pretty, although they always they still collect us. Think about what kind of bags you already have and use and love and use day to day and what sort of bag that is and how you can find something similar in the luxury market that will make you feel less worried or scared about dropping so much cash on just one item. It also really depends on your lifestyle and what kind of bags you use for whatever occasion, what sort of things that you do in your life. Think about what you do the most. Maybe it's a work bag that you should be buying for your first bag because you use it every day or it's just an everyday handbag or you would prefer to buy an evening bag. Evening bag's a good choice because it just makes it feel more special because it's a designer bag. Cost per wear for me for my handbags is very low because I use them all the time. You only have to take a look at my handbag collection video to see the wear and tear of some of my, my bags and how much I've used them. So I really get good use out of my bags. I don't save them for a special occasion. I just, they're there to use, so I use them. I don't recommend being scared and only using your handbag every once in a while. I think it's old fashioned when you keep things for special occasions, especially if you spent so much money on them, just use it. Use it as much as you can, get your full money's worth. Life's too short. Just because it was expensive, it doesn't mean it shouldn't get full use. You know, yes, it was expensive. Yes, I know it takes a while to save up for bags, but. Even if you can afford expensive bags and it doesn't take you a while to save up for them. It's a lot of money to drop in one hit. You've got to be sure about the use that you're going to get out of it. There's also the element of if you intend to keep the bag forever and if it's going to be worth anything or if you're going to resell it eventually and get something else if you tend to change your mind a lot. So that's a lovely segue into the resale value. There are certain bags that once you buy them, they instantly go down in value. Typically Chanel and Hermes generally are the bags that hold their value and increase in value. So they are essentially an investment, but there are some bags that you can recoup a decent amount of money from on the secondhand market if you were to resell it, especially if that bag comes back into fashion. There are a lot of styles of bags that are timeless even though it'll change slightly at least if it's in good nick it's good quality it will fetch a decent price when you do resell i would check the resale market fashion file vestia collective farfetch see what's currently available and what it's reselling for and also consider it as an option to buy secondhand bag instead of brand new from the store purely for the fact that as soon as you buy that bag it will go down in price. I've got a good example of this. 
I purchased this bag from Fashion File a few years ago now and this was near new condition. It didn't come with its box but it came with its dust bag and everything else. This is a Speedy 25 with the bandolier. I've got the bandolier inside and KFC um, towelette. <laughs> I remember I couldn't get this exact color from Louis Vuitton at the time. You could only get I think they only had a beige color and they've only just recently bought out a newer version of this bag and you can buy I think a black and a tan color at the moment on prompt leather so it's full leather mine's a little bit different to the current style because I've got a pocket at the front and the monogram doesn't go all the way to the top so that bag's only just come out and that's I'm gonna put on screen how much this bag cost me in 2021 and how much I think they are now from Louis Vuitton. I basically got this because I wanted this color and they didn't have it from Louis Vuitton and Farfetch had, had it. So that's where I got this bag from and it's beautiful and there's, there was nothing wrong with it. So yes, it, it is, can, do consider buying secondhand or pre-loved because you can usually buy a decent bag that's near new or sometimes they are new. It's always a good option to check first. There is a bag I also don't have on me. It's in storage at the moment. I've just moved from Sydney to Tassie. It's the Gucci Queen Margaret backpack. I'll put it here. And I bought that from Fashion File as well because that was no longer available from Gucci and you could only buy them pre-loved. And I love bees, so I had to have it. I go into why I got that bag in my luxury collection video, but that was also near new. And I'm pretty sure it was around the same price as brand new, but it was a little bit less. It was a few years old too. You always need to factor in what it's going to be worth as soon as you purchase the bag. Like I said, some bags just don't hold their value. As soon as you buy them, they go down. So if that is a factor for you and you are intending to resell it and get a decent amount of money back to then put it that towards another bag, I would consider the style. And if it's something that is a classic, like a Speedy that's always going to be around, it's just a different colorway that will be a seasonal thing or if it's like a style that is always being made that you can then put on the market and get some money back because they're always in demand if you were to buy like a really obscure weird bag unless it had a lot of hype around it there's a lot of seasonal bags that just don't get much money after they've been purchased and then resold eventually the other thing is that your lifestyle might change or just your style might change and there's reasons why you might stop using a bag and then think oh gee i've got this bag here sitting here collecting dust so i should sell it so i can buy something i actually use so that tends to happen always 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 check pre-loved sites now we're on to versatility is it going to be able to be a casual bag that then you can take out in the evening so more of a workhorse kind of bag can do anything can take it anywhere doesn't look out of place if you're at a fancy restaurant or if you're at the supermarket. Does it serve more than one purpose? An example of that kind of bag would be my Louis Vuitton All In in the MM size. Now, I use this bag for work. I use it as an overnight bag. <sighs> Look how big it is, it can't even, it's taking up the screen. I use this for the gym, sometimes even go swimming. So like, it's just got so much space. It's like a 16 inch laptop, I can fit overnight clothes i use this on the plane for traveling so many uses so i don't i didn't just buy this bag and then barely use it like this this gets a lot of use another example of that would be my ysl lulu this is my work bag but i also use this just if i'm going anywhere and i need a bit more space and it's like the weekend and because it's black and gold yes it's huge but i can get away with this of an evening to go straight from work i can take this and it looks classic classy and it just works because she's timeless and i chose her well so that is why choosing a versatile bag is definitely something i suggest okay now we're doing practicality so what do i mean by this i mean does it fit what you need think about what you use every day what kind of bags you already use, what you put in your bags, what you need. Don't go buying a really tiny bag if you want to be able to fit a water bottle in it. That's generally my test because I take minimum a 500 ml water bottle everywhere I go. I do actually take a bigger one if I can, but if I can't fit one in that's that big, I always like to have 
just the standard drink bottle size. And if I can't fit that in my bag, I very much question how much use I'm gonna get out of the bag. The other things to consider for practicality are the type of fabric. So is it canvas, leather, fabric? How durable do you need it to be? Do you want something that you don't have to baby or clean every few days or freak out if you're wearing something in this color transfer or like there's a myriad of reasons. When you get a Louis Vuitton bag, the canvas with the leather on it, the calfskin leather, it's a lot lighter. So if it doesn't have time to patina, it can get like little marks easily that stay forever because it's not like virgin leather it hasn't really been treated so it's very susceptible to marks on it if you haven't do I have any if it hasn't had enough time in the sun essentially like literally do I have any I'm what you might consider a veteran with Louis Vuitton monogram so I took good care of this to make sure it patinaed properly I think I even sat it in the window to get like an even patina anyway anyway the size is another thing so if you are going to buy something that's this size like this is huge and you don't always need this massive size bag i use this a lot solely for work i don't really use this like if i'm just doing running errands or going out for tea or going like doing weekend things i don't usually reach for this bag purely because of the size of this bag like it's she's a big girl you know so what size is the bag? Do you need something smaller? Do you want a crossbody? Is it heavy or light? So that's got chains on it. These are quite light, these chains, but there are some bags that are not only hardware heavy with a lot of metal, but they're also just heavy in their construction. Canvas is very light. Some bags that are just all leather that are quite heavy. Then if you're gonna add stuff into it, especially if it's a really big bag, then that's gonna be damn heavy. Think about that. Think about your lifestyle and what you do on a daily basis, on the weekends, the evenings, where you go, what your style is. Make sure you do the water bottle test if that's important to you. It's gonna be practical if it goes with your wardrobe so i'm going to segue into the, the category of your style you want your bag to be either the standout piece or it to fit in with your wardrobe and be cohesive now i suggest when you buy your first bag to buy a bag that isn't like a bright color unless you wear a lot of black or literally all black and you want something to stand out then that's slightly different but if you have a certain amount of colors that you use or you tend to gravitate towards I would buy something that's like a black or a tan or just something that's a bit more safe because you will get more use out of it because it won't clash. A really good example of that is my red speedy. Now I love red, love red. It's my favorite color. I am happy to wear this when I'm wearing red. I'll still use this bag, but sometimes I like, I have a really big red coat and then having this as well. It's just a lot of red. So there's also like clashes like I don't mind red and green together but I do feel a little bit like Christmassy. There are just certain colors in my wardrobe that not clashing but it's competing and sometimes I do want that so if I'm like wearing this color here and this color I don't mind having a red bag as well but I want to use this bag because of her versatility and her size and the fact that I can fit a water bottle in this but it's not this big but it's not too small, but I can't use it because it's red. So I essentially, I need to look for another bag to get in my collection that's either a tan or a black. This size that I can use on those occasions because it does happen quite a lot. Aside from that, I love this bag and I do get full use out of it. Maybe don't buy like a baby blue bag if you don't wear any colors that go with baby blue because you will use it and then you just keep not using it because it just doesn't go. You also want to consider what style of clothes you wear and the style of the bag. Do you wear a lot of corporate clothing or professional looking clothing in your job or do you have a lot of a mainly casual wardrobe or an athletic style? So all those things will then tie into your accessories and one of those obviously is your handbag. Take stock of your style and your wardrobe and then figure out what would be the best style to go with that wardrobe. Could do a video on that where I match styles with handbags. So let me know if you're interested in that kind of a video. The other thing to consider is hardware. So if you've got a bag with a lot of 
chain detailing, locks, just any, any hardware whatsoever. Is it gold? Is it silver? Do you wear gold? Do you wear silver? Do you wear both? Or black even, like the, the dark black hardware. If you don't ever wear gold and you buy a bag it has got gold hardware on it, then it doesn't make much sense, does it? <laughs> you just don't want any restrictions. You don't want to have to be like, oh, I nearly, really need to use that bag, but I can't use it because I'm wearing something else that doesn't match, that like there's no time, like blah, blah, blah. Just make sure that it works within your current style and your current wardrobe. You also really don't know some of these things until you start using the bag. So I thought like this, getting this red bag was gonna be, obviously I love it and I don't regret it and I use it a lot. I'm very determined to get use out of it, even if I am wearing red, but yeah, I, until I started like dressing and thinking, oh, I wanna put this on and then, oh no, I can't use that bag. So I'm wearing like a big red coat or a big red skirt or a full red dress. And then I need a bigger bag that needs a water bottle in it, but I can't because I'm already wearing a full red dress. Like it's just, it's a whole thing. So it needs to be a durable bag. I really do suggest getting something that is going to not be needing to be handled with kid gloves or babied. Does it rain a lot where you live? If you want to buy one of these bags and you get this in winter and you've got like, you need to use this bag immediately and it's not patinaed yet and you just walk, you go out and it's raining. This will get covered in like little spots and it'll, it'll annoy you for the rest of your life that you own this bag. Are you rough with your bags or do you want to be able to just not have to worry? Do you have kids that might spill food on your bag, coffee on your bag, hot, like sticky soft drinks, orange juice? Have you ever had a drink in your handbag before and it's totally exploded and gone everywhere? I have. <laughs> Actually, it was my Louis Vuitton Tivoli GM and I, luckily it was just a water bottle, but I remember being on the train, on the overground train in London when I lived there and I just got on the train and I had my head, bag over my shoulder and I was like, it's not raining, it was really nice, it was summer, just a normal summer day. Why have I got, why is there water on the floor and I've got like drips on my clothes but it hasn't been raining and I couldn't work it out why there was all this, all this water on the floor around me and then I felt like a bit of a wet patch on like around here and then I it dawned on me and I had this moment where my just my entire because I'm on a train right and you're like what do you do I've got nothing to fix this situation with and I like opened my bag up and it's like things were swimming in the top like floating from the water so this whole bottle of water was like nearly empty because it was one of those stupid Evian ones with the lid and the lid was getting a bit worn and it wouldn't stay on and anyway it was in sideways and it just went everywhere luckily I had my phone in my hand but I did have a few items that did get wrecked <laughs> but the funny part is that that bag's fine now and because it was canvas it didn't get wrecked it just needed to dry out if anything it kind of gave it a bit of a clean inside but oh my god it was so funny because I'm like what do I do I want to train my bag's full of water I can't just like like upend it on the train. It was, oh my God, it was so, it's a nightmare. I don't know how I dealt with it, I can't remember. I think I just got off at the next stop and just like tipped everything out and wiped everything with some, possibly my scarf or some tissues. I can't remember, it was a long time ago, but yes, is it going to be durable? <laughs> Canvas is also really good with scratches. You don't tend to get a lot of scratches on canvas bags or certain types of leather like this one because it's a pebbled like a grain. It's not like a calfskin leather that's really fine. It's very like, it's quite hard wearing for a leather bag. Same with this one. This one is, I'd have to look up what type of leather this is. I'm pretty sure it's not lambskin. I think is lambskin the one that's really soft? I think this is calf skin because it's got a it's quite soft but you can if you look closely it does have a bit of a fine grain to it and I've had this bag scratched a few times and literally you just buffer it out and it's fine it doesn't really have it just I don't know it's just hard wearing it's a workhorse and also because it's black black leather tends to be a bit more of a workhorse in every category, literally. The other thing is the story about this bag. I only had it a couple of days and I was on the way to work and I had my coffee and I somehow spilt coffee all down the front of my new bag that I don't think I'd protected. 
that point. I was a bit worried about protecting it with like leather protector because I was like an idiot. I didn't, turns out I didn't need to worry because it literally just wiped clean with some paper towel and some warm water and it was fine. And then I actually do treat this bag, I clean this. Check out my review up here. At the end of that review, I show how I care for this bag and all my other bags actually. The final tip that I have is head or heart. After all of those things to consider, sometimes you just want a certain bag. The heart just wants what it wants. There's some things that you just can't use rational thinking about. It's just, it's beautiful. You've been wanting it for 10 years. You've been saving up for it. You see it and it's meant to be. It's a special edition bag. They've never had it before. Spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. Just get that bag. Don't get the cheaper dupey option. Just get the bag you want, if you can. Just wait. Don't settle for the bag that's sort of like the bag you want because eventually you will end up selling that or just buying the bag you actually want. It is an emotional thing. It's an emotional purchase. It's a huge amount of cash to drop at one time. You want to get your full money's worth. You want to get use out of it. Factoring all of that stuff in, you do have to go with something that just makes your heart sing and I can't find a better example than this bag. I just wanted a Speedy with a bandolier after having the Speedy 30 for my first bag. I did sell that. I didn't make any money on that. I think I didn't. Anyway, I just wanted a Speedy again, but I wanted a color. I didn't have any colored bags. Obviously this color just, I just love this red. I love you. You're so pretty. <laughs> this is an example of a bit of an emotional purchase because I also bought this after I had recovered from major surgery. So it was a little bit of like a, it holds sentimental value to me and I will never sell her, ever. I won't sell you, it's okay, don't worry. I never get B on camera. You just come in, you wanted to be on camera. Couldn't help it, could you? You don't like being held. I have one cat that loves being held and one that just like is put me down, put me down. Can't deal with it, she just doesn't like it. Anyway, is there a bag that I would recommend? I, yes, I do have a recommendation, but, and you won't be surprised, but like I said, everyone's got different circumstances. How you live your life is different to mine, so your requirements are going to differ greatly from mine. With that being said, I think that Louis Vuitton Speedy is a great option. They're a classic bag. The Canvas Speedy was Louis Vuitton's first foray into handbags, because obviously before that they used to just do luggage. This is more of an expensive option, but I suggest a Canvas one. Definitely get the bandolier, and a bandolier is the strap. So definitely get one with a strap, just because they're versatile, you can remove the strap so you can use it like a classic speedy or you can have the strap if you do crossbody over the shoulder. Just don't get one without a strap. From someone who's had both, just get one with a strap. It's hard wearing, they're versatile. There's monogram canvas, there's Damier Aben, there's Damier Azure. You can get the leather on prompt in the more of a different style, but you will be spending more, just know that. I wish you the best of luck on your first purchase. Let me know what your first bag was in the comments, or if you haven't bought a luxury bag yet, let me know what you're thinking of buying. I suggest that you watch my luxury handbag collection video up here, where I take you through my entire collection and how I use each bag and get the full use of each one. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. That was a lot of information. Please give me a thumbs up if you found it useful or entertaining. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did I miss anything? And for more videos just like this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mwah.